Mm. And I was at a friend's house last night. We was at a campfire, and that's still a little hot. So again, let's ask again. How do you know in this room want to go to heaven? Well, guess what? You don't get you don't you don't get heaven without Jesus. Did you know that? So if, if we ain't excited about coming together on a Sunday morning to worship Jesus, how the heck do you think we're gonna wait when we get to heaven where it's all about Jesus? Where you gonna get to heaven? Yeah, I man. So when we get to heaven, it's gonna be all about Him. It's gonna be glorious. It's gonna be great. Man, it's gonna we're just gonna be praise Him, and we get to do that right now. So again, man, welcome to Bethel. We're glad you guys are here. Amen. 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 All right, some of you get it. Some of you, that's all good. Hey, uh, if you got your Bibles, we'll be in John eight this morning. Because again, we're talking about who is this man named Jesus? You know, I mean, we're fixing to do a uh, Easter play, and we're fixing to see a lot of we see a lot of signs already out that says Jesus is the reason. You know, or, uh, Jesus is risen, and all these different things. It's all about Jesus. Uh, Easter's coming up. Sunrise services. I mean, it's just about Jesus. But who is this Jesus that we're talking about? Why do we celebrate Jesus? Why do we worship Jesus? Man, why do we get up early on a Sunday morning and come to church to sing songs about him and hear more about him? What's so special about this guy? Who is he? You know, as you look through scriptures, uh, if you read the Gospel of John, it has the only book that talks about who he is, about who he is, the I am. That there are seven I am statements that Jesus makes throughout the book of John. So who is he? So we're going to look at that in the next couple of weeks leading up to Easter. But I thought about something, you know, is who is Jesus to the prostitute? Who is the second chance? You know, who is Jesus to Lazarus? He was life. Who is Jesus to the sick woman? He was the healer. Well, my question today is, who is Jesus to you? Who is he? You know, like I said last last week, I posted about who is Jesus. We have all these different things. We have a lot of biblical things, and Jesus is our is our Savior. So don't get me wrong; He's fully God, fully man. But who is He? So this morning we're going to look at who He is, and it starts in the Book of John right here. And if you guys remember, we're in John eight. We're going to be at verse twelve. And ten says that Jesus spoke to them. Says, "I am the light. I'm the light of the world." Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. So who is Jesus? All right, let's try this one more time. All right. In the, uh, verse, chapter 8, verse 12 says, Then Jesus spoke to him again and says, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So who is Jesus? Light of the world. There we go, man. Some of you are catching it. I'm all good. All right, Jesus is the light of the world, man. Because, you know, and if you follow him, we won't walk in what? Because Dark, darkness. darkness, man, it's kind of scary, ain't it? I remember last night, we're sitting around this campfire, and we, we, we get there, we're walking down, and it is pitch black dark, you know? And everything, and, and, and if Brent would have been me, I would have had some things out there to scare some people. You know, that's just how I am. But if we get out there, and, and Kenny's like, we're going to be out here? I said, yeah, baby. I said, just be careful, there's a bunch of wolves out here. And, and, and they travel in packs. And I said, ain't that right, Karen? And Karen kind of, she went along with me on it. She goes, yeah. I said, they had a little chihuahua. And I said, and the wolves took the chihuahua and, and took it away. And Kitty's like, scared to death. Because it may it's dark. How, can anybody, uh, you got, are y'all afraid of the dark? How about as a kid? Y'all been afraid of the dark as a kid? You know, uh, how, many, you had to have a night, how, how many people had to have a nightlight growing up? Or just something on in their house. You know what I mean? Because, again, if it's pitch black dark, when you go in your room, man, you're scared to death. That's it. How about this? When you got in bed, did you keep your hands and your arms together, your hands and your arms and legs together? Like, you did not let them hang over the bed at all? Because if you knew, if your leg or hand hang, hung, hung, uh, hang, hung over the bed, that there would be something underneath it that was going to get you. Man, you know, I still do that to this day for some odd reason. When I'm sleeping, if my hand or my leg flops over that bed, I'm like, back up, uh -uh, hang up. Because there's something under there, you know what I mean? Because I can't see it. Or if you're, you know, uh, if you had a closet in your bedroom, you had to make sure it was shut. Because you're like, man, something's in there. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, but man, but this is like, man, you got to have a little nightlight in that room. And that nightlight, man, it, it just gave a little bit of light. But do you know something? That wherever there's light at, darkness cannot be. Right. Just that one little light. 
It made us feel what? Safe. Because we can see. And also that one little light penetrated the dark. And the darkness was bigger than that light. That light was so small. And all I had to have was just a little bit. And darkness had to do what? Had to flee. And Jesus is coming on the scene. He says, y'all, guess what? I'm the light of the world. If you'll follow me, you don't have to walk in darkness anymore. Man, that, that's some good news right there. But see, the thing is, we, do you know where this story came from? Because we hear, they say, I am. So we're going to backtrack it a little bit, and we're going to look at the story that started before this statement ever came about. Because, again, we've heard this story before, and I've read this story a lot of times, and I've seen it a lot, and we're going to be portraying it in an Easter play. So I'm trying to look at things that we're doing in Easter play to kind of speak out to you guys. And in this story, it talks about a woman that was caught in adultery. Now, remember that story. But so, before he ever says, I am the light of the world, there's a story of a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. So let's back up a little bit and let's see this story because I think there's some things that we can learn from this story about who Jesus really is. Okay? And there's three things we're going to look at this morning. And I promise you, I'm going to try to make them go fast. I got my Pepsi Max up here, so I got caffeine in me. So maybe y'all just get ready, buckle up, because we're going to go fast. Y'all just watch the YouTube channel afterwards and say, what did he say? He talked real fast. Y'all pray for the interpretation of, of fast speaking, okay? <laughs> All right, here we go. And this is going to be uh, chapter 8, verse 2. It says, At dawn, he went to the temple complex again, and all the people were coming to him. He sat down and began to teach them. This is Jesus. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in the act, in the act of adultery, making her stand in the center. And they said, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone her. So what do you say? So in this moment, they're trying to catch Jesus. Now, first off, where was the dude at? You know, it takes two to tango, huh? But we don't hear about this guy here. So we hear about this woman. Now, I want you to think about this woman here. As she was doing the brown chicken, how do you say it, Mary? Brown huh? chicken, brown cow. Yeah. Brown chicken, brown cow with some dude. And here comes these Pharisees. All right, they catch her, and they drag her out in the middle of everybody. Now, you understand something. Now, this had to be a very humiliating place for this woman because she had to be naked. I don't think they stopped and said, hey, will you please put your clothes on now? <laughs> Thank you. Now, let's go. No, they went in there, and they grabbed her, and they dragged her out there. Now, she might have had a sheet, but she was covering up. But if, you, if, you, if it's anybody, she's like anybody, being naked in front of people is what? It's embarrassing. It's a very shameful act. So you've got to think about this woman here. She is probably embarrassed, shamed, humiliated. And they take her and they throw her down in front of Jesus. Now this was a trap to catch Jesus. All right. And we're going to look at the law, the love, and the life. Now the law says what? We're going to stone her. Because see, the law is set up for something. You know what it's set up for? It just shows us that we are guilty. That we're guilty. The law shows us that we are guilty. So according to the law of Moses, this woman was what? She was guilty. I mean, she was doing she was she was doing the do, you know what I mean? I mean, she was getting on with a married man. They throw her, they throw her down in front of Jesus, and they, I mean she's right there, and they look at Jesus, they hey, hey Jesus. The law of Moses said we should stone this woman. What do you say? Now Jesus had a thing here now. He was a little glimmer, because see, if he said, hey, kill her. Then he's going to be misinterpreted what he always said about love and grace and forgiveness. But then if he goes to, hey, hey, let her be, it's okay, he's going to be going against the laws of Moses saying it's okay to do, have adultery. So Jesus has got out of a situation here. They're trying to catch him, trying to trap him, because you know what a lot of Pharisees do? And the thing is, we have a lot of Pharisees still to this very day. And those are the religious people, the legalistic people. You know what they like to try to do? They like to try to catch people on things, don't they? They always like to call out other people's sins, don't they? Yeah. When they're dealing with stuff themselves. It's like, hey, you know what? I'm going to point out everything that you're doing wrong, and I'm going to hide everything that I'm doing because I want to look good. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, when they throw this woman down, what does Jesus do? He gets down in the dirt with her. He gets right down there with her. And he starts writing some things. Now, what did he write? Nah, no one knows. I don't know. It doesn't say. Some scholars believe that what he wrote in there was the other people's sins, the things that they were doing. Because the law shows us we're guilty in everything. All right? Now, he's down there right in the dirt. 
And he says something great. You know what he says to him? He says, hey, you who is without sin, cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is down there. Because again, now we understand, was this woman guilty? Yes. Was she innocent? No. Did she deserve to be stoned? Yes. According to the law, she did, right? According to Moses' law, according to God's law, she deserved death because of her actions. Now the thing is, how many of us in this room deserves death for our actions? Because one thing a lot of people don't like to do nowadays is to admit when they're in the wrong doing. Because see, the th good thing about the law, because I know we hear a lot of people talk, hey, we're not under the law no more. You know, the law is a good thing. Because see, the law shows us that we need a Savior. Because when we realize that we're sinners, we'll realize that we need a Savior. Because if we don't think we need a Savior, man, we've missed out. If we don't think that we sin, then we've missed the whole thing. I need a Savior. But it's hard for us to admit when we're wrong. You know, I put like this. How many in this room has ever hated somebody? Okay. How many in this room has ever looked at somebody and said, God, you did a good job? Okay. Look at Hannah. Hannah, both hands up. <laughs> Lord, I'm just looking at your masterpiece. You did a good job, God, on that one. Yeah. You adulterer. <laughs> Man, a lot. Hannah, come on up here. I, I need some more oil, please, for her. But again, see, see, we all, you, know, that is how you see, guess what? We're all guilty. Everybody in this room is guilty because if you hated someone, you've committed murder. If you looked upon someone, guess what you've already done? You've already committed adultery. So if we don't understand that we're sinners, then we'll never say that we need a Savior. That's right. That's right. we got to have a Savior because we're sinners. That's what, that's what the law does. The law shows us our guilt. But this woman was down there in the very act of what we call the very act of God, putting that in front of Jesus and said, hey, Jesus, what should we do with her? Because the law says we should stone her. Now, I love what Jesus does here because, see, the thing is, if the law shows us our guilt, then guess what God's love shows us? It shows us exactly. It shows us our redemption. It shows us grace. Because he gets down there, look at this right here. And she said, they say to him, this woman was called the act of adultery. The law of Moses says, first to stone a woman like this. So what do you say? They asked this to trap him in order that he might have evidence to accuse him. Now Jesus stooped down and started writing on the ground with, he, with his finger. When, he, when they persisted in questioning him, he stood up and he said to them, the one who is without sin among you should be first to throw a stone at her. Then he stooped down again, and he continued to write it on the ground. When they heard this, they left one by one, starting with the older men. And only he was left with the woman in the center. And when Jesus stood up, he said to her, Woman, where are they now? And one translation I read says, Where are your accusers? Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you something. Who's the accuser? Satan. Satan. He's the accuser. Jesus, Jesus is, I mean, you know, I want you to get this mental picture right here. You see, I think some of us forget that we're just like that woman called the act of adultery. Because a lot of times we'll look at someone that does something like that. And we think, man, my sin is nowhere near that sin. Hmm. I'm, not, I'm, nowhere, I'm not as bad as her. But see, sin is sin. Yes, sir, man. There's no, there's no hotter place in hell for this sinner than this sinner. All right? There's no hotter place. You're not going to get to heaven. God's going to look and say, well, you know, well, you only did this. It's okay. Now, we might do that here, mm -hmm. but God doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. So when we look at this woman, a lot of times we read this Bible, and I've read the scripture so much about this woman called Audrey, and I kind of look past it, never put myself in the situation that this woman was in. Never thinking that I was that bad off. And I thought about Jesus sitting there. I mean, just again, you got to picture this. This woman was doing something with another man. Dragged out. Put in display for everybody to see her. And I'm her shame. Now you know what's going through her mind. This is it for me. I'm done. Because they're, they're, they're telling me that I've got to be stoned. And that's the law. That's what's supposed to be done to me. I'm supposed to be stoned. And guess what? I'm not talking about the other stuff. Okay? I'm talking about killing her with a rock. Just want to throw that out there. Some of y'all are going to go back home. You know, that says you got stuck. No. Uh, <laughs> not what Moses was talking about. 
So they got her down there, and she's on the ground, and Jesus gets down there. Because if anybody had a right to accuse this woman, it's who? Jesus. It's Jesus. Because he is the great I am. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning. He is God. He is fully God, fully man. So if anybody had the right to accuse this woman, it was him. Not these other people. So he writes the dirt. He says something. To, I don't know what he said. Maybe he was calling out their sins. Some people believe he was. And they leave one by one. Except for this woman. She is sitting there in the ground, humiliated. And there's Jesus. He gets down in the dirt with her. And he tells her, he says, Woman, where are your accusers at? Where are they at? I don't accuse you either. See, we find in his love that there is redemption. Because, see, the accuser that we know of today is Satan. How many times does Satan tell us, hey, you messed up? Yeah. You can't do it. Yeah. Remember what you did before? Remember this? Remember that? You missed the mark here. You, you can't do it now. He's always accusing us of things. Bringing up our past. Has anybody ever been there? Mm. Where you still remember your past? Still remember your mistakes? Can I tell you something? That's not Christ. That's Satan, because that's his job, to accuse us of things. But you know what Jesus says? If you're in me, guess what you are? You're a new creation. He says, guess what? Also, if you're in me, there is absolutely no condemnation of those that are in Christ Jesus. Did you know if you start walking with him, that you're no longer walking in the darkness, you'll walk in the light? Imagine that real quick. This woman here is thinking, I'm just going to lose my life because I am guilty. I deserve death. I deserve everything. And here's a man that's looking at her saying, hey, where are your accusers at now? I don't accuse you either. See, his love shows us redemption. As the law shows us our guilt, his love shows us grace and redemption. But then guess what he says to the woman? And see, this is where we miss, miss that sometimes. Because in redemption, he tells her to get up. He says, and go win. Go now. And do what? Sin no, Sin no more. Don't live in your sin anymore. And just say, hey, listen, I know it's going to be tough. I know it's going to be hard. Just keep doing what you're doing. It'll be okay. Go later. I know you, I know you had a bad, I know it's bad on you. I know you had, you had a bad upbringing. I know everything's coming against you. It's all right. You know, just don't, just don't, don't sleep with married men no more. You know? No, he says what to her? He says, I want you to go now. I want you to do something. I want you to sin no more. I don't want you to live in that sin no more. And see, so we get to see something. If we get to walk in His light, guess we get to walk in. We get to walk in the freedom. Because a lot of times we feel like, Dan, I can't get through this addiction. I can't get through this pain. I can't get through this divorce. Or my marriage will never make it. We've been through too much. You don't understand what we've been going through. It's time to call it a quiz. I, nothing's going to work out for me no more, Jamie. Nothing's going to work out, but you know what Jesus is telling you? Walk in me. Because you might think you're in darkness right now, but if you'll walk in me, there's light. And again, remember, no matter how dark we make this room, if we put one little light over that corner, guess what happens? Darkness has to flee. Yes. If we'll just understand it, if we'll walk in Him, we follow Him, because He's I am the light of what? I'm the light of the world. If you follow me, you would not walk in what? Darkness. darkness. The darkness will not be in you. So if we'll walk in you, guess what we have? We have hope. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> but we have hope. Because you think about this woman right here. Do you think huh? she had hope anymore? What do you think she was going through? I mean, she was an adulterous woman. Now, I don't know about you, but I know how women are. And girls, you can attest by this. Even when y'all are growing up at a young age, a lot of girls are thinking about what? Their marriage. That beautiful day. Hannah's like, I can't wait. <laughs> that, that, it only, it's only about five minutes. <laughs> I do appreciate it. I do, I do. 
But again, I'm just saying, but you know how girls are. I mean, how, how, girls in this room, how many of y'all have pretended about marriage when y'all were little kids about walking down the aisle, putting the thing on? I want this. I want the Cinderella wedding. I want everything. I want Prince Charming. I want this. That's going to be the most beautiful day. It's just going to be, I mean, it's just going to be great. All right? You want that day. But here's a woman that was caught in adultery. Guess what? She ain't thinking about finding Mr. Right. Because she knows there's not a Mr. Right out there for her. Because to her, she's just a piece of meat. To her, she's trash. She's just something people use. So she don't have any hope. She's probably miserable. Have you ever been around people like that? Have you ever been that way? Thinking, man, man I'm just happy to be alive. Because I've messed up so much. I've screwed up so much. I've ruined so much. I'm just glad I'm alive right now because, man, actually, I should be dead. Have you ever thought that? Man, I just wonder by the grace of God, I'm still alive. I just wonder by the grace of God, this woman is still alive. But see, the thing is, guess what? God didn't just stop, stop there. He didn't just stop with giving her life. He said, I'm going to give you life. Come on. Life. Go now. Don't have to stay in this anymore. You don't have to stay in this darkness. You don't have to stay with this addiction. That's what aggravates the crap out of me about AANA. I love AANA. I think what they're doing is a good thing, but man, I love Son of Our Recovery so much more. You know why? Because we know our higher power is Christ. Amen. Amen. And when our higher power is Christ, there is absolutely nothing we can't do through Him. Okay? And the thing is, if he comes in, a, this woman didn't get up. He said, hey, listen here. I want you to get up out of your dirt, out of your sin, out of your situation, and just don't have sex with married men no more. You didn't have sex with anybody else. Just don't do it, married women. Just do it on the weekends. No. Because, see, that's how a lot of us play this game. We get Jesus. He redeems us. He tells us to go now. We say, wait a minute, I don't want to go now. Can I hold on to this stuff right here? And we're still holding on to the baggage that he said, you're free from. Do you understand that? Because there's hope. You don't have to live in that darkness anymore. You don't have to live that way no more. Because he's the light of the world. There's hope again. He said, I've never met any addict that says, I love him and that. You know? I've been to this for 17 years. And this goes both ways, man, male and female. I've never met a male or female that says, you know what? I love sleeping around with everybody in the world. I love that feeling. I love waking up the next day and having a clue who this person is next to me. That's just a great feeling. You know what? I call my mom every night. I say, Mommy, you ain't with us. I was with number 12 today. <laughs> I'm proud. You proud of me? Look at all the, all the can tops I'm, I'm collecting. That's an old school there. <laughs> You know, you don't go on Facebook and say, hey, <laughs> slept with another. <laughs> you know, you don't go on Facebook and you know, don't do that. You don't go on Facebook and say, I just I hate everybody. You know, <laughs> I'm so depressed. I, I cut my wrist today. You don't do that. You know, why? Because you don't want to be that way. No one wants to be depressed. No one wants to be a floozy. No one wants to be an alcoholic or a drug addict. They don't want that life. And Jesus said, man, stop. I'm the light of the world. Follow me. You'll never walk in the darkness again. And he told us to go now. See, will we understand him? Will we understand this story? The story wasn't just for her. The story was for me and you. Because everyone in this room is guilty of something. Maybe it wasn't adultery. But it was something. And the accuser's always coming to guess and says, you know what? You've messed up. You can't make it. The boat's sailing. And it's funny because I was, I was praying for people up here this morning. There's so many people in this room. And I don't even, I don't even throw, I'll throw this out here. How many in this room? Says Jamie, I've had, I've had thoughts that I'm called to be in the ministry. Be honest. Put hands up. Get them up there. Hi, man. Hold it up. Hi, man. Maybe be proud of it. That's something God's going to do. How many of you have felt like you've missed the mark? That you failed? The mistakes? Can I tell you something? God, our God, 
So this prostitute, this woman caught in adultery, it was a guy of second chances for her. See, again, you need to understand who, 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 who we're talking about. Jesus is not the light. Satan is the prince of darkness. Okay? He says, I'm the light. This is darkness. And he says, Satan is the accusers. If you're in me, there's no condemnation. If you're in me, your past is your past. It doesn't define who you are. If that thought should come to you and it's telling you you're, you missed it, but you can't do it, you need to understand that doesn't come from him. It comes from him. And he's defeated. He has no power over you anymore. Now, it's up to you if you want to get out of that dirt or not. Mm. Now, that woman can stay in the dirt. She can stay right there and water it in all she wanted and self-pity. She could have took the, the words that he spoke and acted upon it. You know what she did? She took it. She acted. And she didn't wait. She did it then. Because he says, now, go and sin no more. Right. So what God's asking you this morning, he's not asking you to stay in the, in, in the thing. Because see, I, I, I've been around Christians. You know what they think? Well, Jamie, I, I, I've just done so much wrong in life. I, 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 need to, I, I should be over here because I don't deserve that. Guess what? No, you don't. You don't deserve anything. You do deserve the law. Okay? You deserve the penalty of the law. But thank God for His grace. You don't receive the penalty of the law. You receive His grace. Amen. I mean, you should walk in that. My God, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard before in my life. Right. And it's like we miss it. But, well, I need to show God I'm sorry. Man, no. God never asked you to show you he, you were sorry. Because while you were still sinners, Christ did what? He came to die for us. Amen. To give us what? To give us life. Amen. Not death, but life. So if God has put something in you, He plans to fulfill it in you. That's right. But the thing is, it's up to you. You're going to stand in the dirt, right. and you're going to get up. Because again, I'm telling you now, but Jack, that's not, you're not talking to me. Yes, I am. I'm talking to anybody who's who was caught the very act of whatever it is you were caught in. You're caught in it. I'm talking to you. If God puts something in you, I'm talking to you. But it's up to you. God's already laid it out in front of you. And that's what we're missing at today. We don't take this word literally. Because right. again, if we start taking this word literally. When he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, guess what we do? We'll do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can do it. When those, when those, when those thoughts come to our mind that accuse us, accusing us of you, know what we do? We take them captive. We put them underneath the subject of God's word. Because we know we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Because in him, there is light. And this is where he ended that statement with, after he told the story about this woman, and I after the story of this woman, Jesus looks up to the people and he says to him, he says, Then Jesus spoke to them again. He said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life in them. I don't know about you, but I need that in my life. Amen. I need that hope. That hope only comes in Christ. But it doesn't come by staying that dirt. Because what good would it be if she would have stayed in that dirt? Think about it. She had to get up and start walking in it. I can just imagine, and we don't know anything else too much more about this story. But I just kind of believe this for her. And when she got out of that dirt, she started living it out. I imagine there was a man waiting on her. I love her. I took her in. I don't know if this ever happened. Neither do you, so you can't prove it all. <laughs> but imagine how she felt when she met somebody. They didn't just want her for one thing. They wanted her for everything. Treated her. And she was everything. 
Well, that's a beautiful story right there. Mm -hmm. See, that story's for you too, this morning. And you think, there's no way God can use me. Nothing too much. No, friend, let me tell you something. Jesus can use you. He will use you. And whatever dream he put in you, he's going to make it a reality if you'll get out of the dirt. Amen, sir. And act upon it. Now. Not later. But now. That's the problem. A lot of us are waiting until later. And Jesus says, now is the time. You walk in that. Because again, if you're in Christ, there's no condemnation if you're in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ, behold, all things are new. The past is what? I've done away with. So you're a new creation. The thing is, there will be people that's going to pull, bring up your past. There are going to be people that's going to accuse you of things. And yes, there will be people that accuse you of those things that are religious people. It happened to her. But you just remember who set you free. Because if he set you free, you're what? Free. You're free indeed. Think about that. So stop wandering in your past. Start walking in your future. So as Teddy gets back, get up, gets up in this morning as we get ready to close. I want to ask a question this morning. Hey, you're serious to Jamie? And I'm living in the darkness right now. I'm living in it. I feel lost. There's no hope. Let me tell you something. Until you're honest with yourself, you can never get it. You gotta be honest. See, maybe she she didn't have a she didn't have a choice. She got dragged out. She was caught in the act and thrown on display. Maybe you're here and you're like, no one knows my stuff, so I'm gonna keep it to me. See, you're staying in the darkness. And you're staying, you're staying, you're staying bound up. And you're wondering why nothing's happening in your life. And you're, you're wondering, Jack, I, I'm coming to church. God never asked you to come to church. He asked you to be free. But Jamie, I, 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 I pray, I read my Bible, I post scriptures on Facebook. That's good. But you're still not free. And the reason why you're not free is because you're not laying it all out. This girl, she couldn't be free. She continued to do what? Walk in her sin, could she? She couldn't be free. She started walking in it again. She could act now and do what? Go and sin no more. So what's God asking you to do? Because again, if you, if, if you need hope in your life, you need life, you want to walk in the light, you couldn't walk in the darkness, you got to get real with Jesus. And it starts right now. Not tomorrow. Not a couple weeks. But now. If you want that freedom, if you want that hope, it starts now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. But now. But the thing is, you've got to be honest with yourself. Because see, the thing is, you can't hide anything from God. God knows exactly what you're going through. You don't think of, well, Jamie, I ain't going at all. No, no, no. Sit, then you're going to stay in that sin that you're wandering in. Because you're still holding on to it. Think about it. Well, Jamie, it's going to be embarrassing. Here's a woman. Naked. Displayed. For everybody to see. You talk about shame. But I'm going to tell you right now. I'll go through any kind of shame for freedom. And bondage. Because I want to be free. I want to be free. I got to be free. I got to walk in the light. Because the darkness is what? It's scary, ain't it? Is anybody like walking in the dark? No. No. So today's the day. We act. We act now. So I'm asking this morning 
No head bows, no eyes closed. As the prayer team comes up here, and you say, Jamie, I need that hope. I need it. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of being in my sin. I'm tired of being in the shame, the guilt that it causes, because don't sin cause shame and guilt. Doesn't it? Yes, it does. If you're tired of that, you want to walk in the light of glory, don't hesitate. Because there's freedom right there. There's freedom right there. But there's freedom. There's freedom in it. So that's you this morning. Again, remember the Pharisees thought they had all the act together. Just saying. But that's you this morning. Instead of sings, as we worship, we invite you to come up here. We invite you to let down and walk in the newness that Christ has for you. Walk in the light, not the darkness anymore. Because again, if you're in Christ, there's no condemnation. If you're in Christ, there's light. If you're in Christ, there's hope. If you're in Christ, you're a new creation. If you're in Christ, your past is your past. If you're in Christ, there's victory. If you're in Christ, there's freedom. If you're in Christ, you're the head. You're not the tail. If you're in Christ, you're above and not beneath. If you're in Christ, you can do all things. If you're in Christ, there's victory. There's freedom. There's liberty. But only if you're in Christ. Because apart from Him, we learned last week, you can do what? Nothing. So she sings, I invite you. Today's the day. Act now. Act now.